So for me, it's a big, big emotion to be here. Allow me some emotion for three reasons. First of all, because it's about women, because it's about space and tech, and it is because it's about Finland. And this has been an amazing year for Finland in space. And we will talk a little bit about that. Uh, and also it's the right timing because, you know, tomorrow we will have an asteroid coming very close to Earth, only 40,000 kilometers, so good choice. Um, okay, so I will start uh, with a little story about myself. Uh, I am an astrophysicist and was I passionate about physics when I was at high school? No. My passion was literature, poetry, was the, the word of the words. So this kind of uh, uh, big questions, uh, uh, philosophical questions, existential questions. But I felt at the time that if I had to focus my future life on those subjects, I would have been uh, closing myself, closing myself to myself. And I needed to find a calmer dimension in my right, brain, right side of the brain and to uh, study the most difficult subject. I just wanted to challenge myself with the most difficult subject. And this would have allowed me to take my center of gravity outside myself, I was so much in myself, to take it out and to put far away in this uh, infinite universe where I would have been only an instant, a point, but still with the power of understanding it. And this was an amazing experience. An amazing experience, why? And this is a message that I like to pass to girls uh, when, they are, when they have to choose their subject. Because physics is one of those subjects that obliges you completely to get out of your box. Your experience in this Newtonian world, where an apple falls on your head, or you throw something and you know where it will be ending, is completely useless. In physics, you have, i just give you an example, you have uh, helium. Helium superfluid, under a certain temperature, he loses his third dimension. It becomes bidimensional. Crazy, no? You put in a glass, you go down, and it just starts leaking only because it cannot sustain a third dimension. Looks magic? No, it's physics. We know by now that probably we live in a universe that is made by 11 dimensions, of which seven wrapped around themselves, and we only see four, but we can probably one day start to get the sense of the fifth and the sixth. Is this crazy? No, it's physics. Is it crazy to think that time feels gravity? It's, it's one of the big uh, discoveries, gravity and speed. But speed, uh, we, know, we know more. But gravity, it's unbelievable uh, to think that the time on my feet goes lower than on the top of my head. And this is one of the big discoveries of Einstein uh, a little bit more than 100 years ago. So what I'm saying is that through science, I have really transformed myself. And this is a picture. It's the first time I, I show this picture, because, and I will, you can blackmail me now, because look, my permanent. Uh, and uh, actually, this is uh, one of the, I, I was here with Professor Ruffini and my bunch of colleagues, and this was the meeting where the, there was the agreement to make the experiments that today brought to, this, to, to discovery of gravitational waves. And I can talk hours about gravitational waves. I will not do it. I will just bring you through a, a trip to the cosmos, very short, because we have many subjects, but just to share with you the wonder, the wonder of space. So this is one, one of my favorite. So do I dare to disturb the universe? I start with this, because it's very relevant also to women in space, uh, is this uh, um, fear sometimes anxiety of getting into a scientific subject. We know by many studies, including a recent one from OECD, that girls uh, perform extremely well uh, they, when they are young child, uh, they don't uh, 
they are not afraid to die, they are not afraid to look stupid, to ask the right, the, the, the strangers questions. And then while they grow up, it's like a wall, it comes an anxiety of not being performant or look stupid. And this is really a pity. I give you, uh, I share with you an anecdote from, uh, from a famous cosmologist, Brian Green, who tells this story that once he goes to, a, to an elementary school and asks, uh, the kids to make a drawing. And there is a little girl, six years old, very focused with her drawing. And then he goes and says, ah, uh, what are you drawing? I'm drawing the face of God. <gasps> the face of God. But no one knows the face of God. In a minute, they will. So, <laughs> girls lose this, this uh, push. I, I, I stereotype a bit, but it's true that there is, and this is really demonstrated, that there is an anxiety of, of that impacts the ability to dare. And this is a nice sentence from uh, Pumfrock, which is a character of Thomas Eliot. Now, look at this beautiful, this one of my favorite, this uh, bubble, celestial bubble, floating peacefully in the universe. It expands at the, at the speed of 18 million kilometers per hour and is the result of the explosion of a supernova. Now, just quickly, I have to tell you that a star can die in many ways. It depends how big it is. For instance, our sun uh, in five billion years will, will uh, end his fuel, his energy, and so it will be, start becoming cold, a red giant. It will swallow Mercury and Venus. We, we will be safe, and then it will collapse in a nine dwarfs, so dense that one teaspoon is 200 tons. But if you are a little bit bigger, then you can explode as a supernova, and this is one of the supernova. If you are even bigger, then the, once you have finished your fuel, you will just collapse in space-time, and you will become a black hole. So just to tell you that black holes uh, and we will see something on that, are dead stars. Now, this is an amazing picture as well, and, and this is, I, sh I choose this because I want to talk about the superpowers of science. Science gives us superpowers. This is what we have to tell girls. In this picture, you, you know that when you look at the night sky, tonight, yesterday, you are looking back in the past. You are not looking at the, uh, at this moment, at the same moment of your nose. You're looking back in the past. And actually, what is amazing of stars is that given that they are a different distance, you are looking at the multiplicity of past times. And this is because light takes time to arrive to us. Now, with this picture, which is one of the most amazing of the Hubble telescope, uh, he has been able to focus on uh, one point of the sky, one let's say one over 150 the size of the moon. Look how many galaxies in just a little portion. And the, the smallest and reddish points that you can see here, galaxies, are among the first galaxies formed in our universe. Amazing. We are looking back, so back, 30 billion years ago. And uh, this is... So you see, um, I will not tell you why we cannot see the Big Bang, because it will take long. We cannot, because light, light and matters, they formed after. So we can only look so far. But this gives you really this perception of how uh, unbelievable in a universe that is 13.8 billion years old, we can look at galaxies that are only 800, only 800 million years old. Another thing that I will tell you, I will be play with scaring, you have uh, essentially two, ty two types of galaxies. We will see them. You have the spirals, like the Milky Way, and the elliptics. Now, you have to know that most of the elliptics are cannibal galaxies. They have eaten a lot of other galaxies to become elliptic. But I will show you this as well. Uh, this is just because it's cute, it's the Sombrero Galaxy. 
and you see this, uh, this milk color, and uh, it's very amazing. And this is one of our uh, the favorite in terms of picture because it's really in front of us. It's a, a spiral galaxy like Milky Way, and all these uh, red points are uh, cradles where stars are forming. So it's, uh, it's, it's really... And at the center, we know that the center of uh, uh, galaxies, we let's say suspect, but we know that there are black holes in our galaxies. For instance, Sag Sagittarium A is our black hole, and it, it weighs millions of suns. This is a picture of the effect of a black hole, so drawing matter into it. And this as well. The center is in another galaxy, the center of a black hole. Now, I like this, and we will tell you why. This is also supernova. This is uh, um, Cassiopeia A. It's one of the youngest supernova. So you see how beautiful are the filaments. But I want to show you actually this. I don't know if the movie starts. Yeah. So this is an explosion of a supernova. I don't want to run out of time. And, and then it goes to the picture we saw. Why I, like, why I wanted to show you this? For the simple reason is that this is not because the video is mute. It's because the universe is silent. To have sound in the universe, you need to move air. If you throw a stone in a lake with no water, nothing happens. If you throw a stone in a lake with water, you have waves. The same for sound. So in an empty universe, a big violent event without sound is not so violent. And this is another thing, tell your kids, is very powerful. Music is also one of the privileges of our planet. And this is what I was telling you, that galaxies merge. So uh, this is a nice picture. These are called uh, the mice. Uh, and you see that the moment gravitationally they, they encounter each other, gravity pulls out stars out of each other. They merge, and they become one with time, of course, one single star. One thing I want to tell you, this, this picture comes from the Hubble Space Telescope, which is rotating around Earth. But in two years' time, we will have a, a, a telescope 10 times more uh, powerful, the James Webb Telescope. And instead of rotating, it will put in a place that is called Lagrangian Point, where you don't need to rotate to stay still. And he will open a new world of cosmology and astrophysics. The, the picture will be thousands of times more amazing than these ones. So, uh, yes, now, yeah, yeah, how can I start? Let me go. Let me go here. And then I saw the movie. Now, one, you know that uh, uh, Hubble uh, realized that the universe was expanding because it observed, uh, it observed the light of galaxies were going towards the red. So going towards the red meaning that they, they escape each other, they are running away. But we have a, a neighbor a galaxy, Andromeda, and the light is going to the blue. So she's coming towards us, and we know that she's also not a very careful drive. She has already taken another galaxy on its way, and she will, I told you I was to scare you, she will eat us in for a billion years. So, but the sun will be dead, so there is nothing to, <laughs> to be scared of. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to tell you, and then I go to the rest, because I'm using my time on space, I knew that. Uh, one thing that is also, I don't know if I can stop. Okay. One thing I want to, yes, okay, let's go to this one, and then I will say, uh, European Space Agency, and Finland is one of our, uh, great members, uh, we have been able uh, to land on a comet in a few years ago, after a trip of 10 years, a comet that is 5 million kilometers away, 4 kilometers apart, 
So you see how, big, how small it is. Also with the shape of a duck, we didn't know that. We discovered that it was quite difficult to, to land on it and rotating, rotating very fast. We have been able to land with a little robot. I am sorry I couldn't put the picture here for mistake, but called Fila. And it's nice because no one before us, and I want to say this because Finland was part of this achievement, no one before was landing on a comet. And uh, so the little Fila landed, and because there is no gravity, an object that is four kilometers has not enough gravity to keep you on the, so we had some arpions. So the little Fila landed, bounced it once, and bounced it twice. So we like to say that we have been is that we have been the first to land on a comet, and the second and the third. And, uh, and why we went there, this is also another mystery, we went there because we want to understand how water came on Earth. Uh, and probably comets bring, bring water. We, we found water, but has nothing to do with the water on Earth. This is also a very interesting thing. So the mystery is still there, how water came on Earth. Now, we stop this. Ah, last thing, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> is about, so we are in a, in a universe where we have many parameters. Uh, actually, the speed of the light is a fixed constant. We have uh, the electronic charge in the fixed element. All this seems fine-tuned to, to allow us to exist in this universe. So the scientist tells us there are all the universe possible. And so the theory of multi-universe is also a very inspirational one, and I like this sentence from Alan Ginsberg, science alone is true poet, and this closed with my, I wanted to be a poet and became a scientist. He gives us the moon, he promised the stars, he'll make us a new universe if it comes to that. Now we move to the hard job, to space. So the space world world is changing, let me look at the Timing, so uh, global evolution, first of all, you see that the number of, uh, it's really going global space. The number of space agency has doubled, and the number of uh, um, countries that invest more than 10 million in space uh, is now more than seven, they are now more than 70, while only in 2003 were 35, 37. So nation with launchers, of course, having a launcher is a big investment, and usually launcher is because of also strategic reasons. But when you see a nation with the operational satellites, no country, no continent is excluded, and this is so essentially uh, is telecom, is uh, satcom, but also earth observation for national development. Uh, this is just to give you the size of the public spending. Uh, so you see uh, that Europe represents more or less uh, eight billion uh, dollars, nine billion dollars, so seven billion euro, and these are uh, the sizes of uh, uh, of the other uh, powerhouse. Now, uh, and you see the projection. This is also very important. It's not they are increasing, but this is this is just an uptrend uh, development. So space is really uh, representing uh, uh, the place to be for the future. Now, the major players. I just want to say a few things. So U.S. U.S. That, uh, you know that with Obama, uh, U.S. in a way. Uh, invested in particular on uh, boosting the, 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 the new space economy that you know to the billionaires. Just a few days ago, Pence announced, uh, so the vice president, that they want to go back to the moon. Exactly as Bush announced, more or less along the line of what Bush announced in 2004. Um, and so you know that, okay, sorry. Well, one little thing is that today the only way to go to space is through uh, Russian vehicles because uh, uh, the Americans grounded the shuttle after the reflection following the Columbia accident. And I was at that time in the US, so uh, it was really a big, uh, big decision. And next year they will have their own, uh, they will be back in human space flight with, uh, with their SLS space launch system again. Important to know and to follow. 
So Russia and they are doing another cosmodrome. I will not go through too much through this. The Chinese, they are also, uh, you know, they have been with the robot on the moon uh, that ended just recently, Chang'e 3. Uh, and they had two, uh, for 30 days, two taikonauts, you know, that European and uh, uh, Americans are called astronauts, the Russian are cosmonauts, the Chinese are taikonauts. So these are two taikonauts. Um, and then also India is coming up, uh, lo having launched 104 satellites in 2017. Now, changing paradigms is that before, the race to space was a race among nations. And actually, apart maybe sport, there is no such a stage as a space to compete. And the, comp the com competition now is very much related, I mean, to the big billionaires that see space as a new frontier. And it's a kind of, I, I think you know everyone, Paul Allen, Bezos, uh, Branson, and Musk. And why uh, is because is, is, uh, is the new West, Wild West? Because of the gold rush, uh, they are very aware that the economics from space is only increasing, and because, of course, of the settlers, uh, new frontiers, the, the push and the challenge of being where we have not been already is, is very strong, and they have the means to go into these endeavors. I can talk about them if you want, uh, but I just want to say one thing that is interesting, is that, uh, and because we are very much in tech and business, uh, Obama, during the Obama period, NASA was mandated, so by legislation, to promote to the maximum extent the uh, commercial use of space, meaning, that the economic sphere of the US was expanding to the solar system. So it was not just defining a destination where we want to go, but really setting the base for the private business to come in. And this has boost the new space era that we know. Uh, now what is interesting is that so the billionaires, uh, and in particular Elon Musk, which is, which is a visionary, very, very brilliant person, uh, now he wants to have a system, uh, uh, so he's building um, a rocket uh, that will be bigger than Saturn V, the biggest rocket that we will have, and the capsule, because he wants to be able to go to Mars, and he wants also to be able to do with the capsule so to Mars and bring people to Mars, colonizing Mars. So this capsule will have 40 cabins with two, three people per cabins, and being able so to colonize, to bring the human species in the solar system. And now, uh, recently, so in, uh, in Australia, was also mentioning that uh, this rocket, and the name is BFR, B is for big, R is for rocket, F, I'll, I, I, let you guess, I leave you guess what it is, because it's a, it's a bad word, it's the F word. Uh, and so they can be used to go to the moon, to go to the station, maybe replace Falcon 9, and also why not being able to go to New York, to Shanghai in 39 minutes, given that it travels at 18,000 miles per, uh, per hour. So, this is, and what is interesting is that once you have, and these are my own reflection, once you have the private setting the vision, how we follow. And uh, I mean, they have the right to set the vision, and we will see. But it's a good driver for everyone to have uh, this kind of visionary uh, people. So, my Director General, uh, Jan Werner, under his leadership, we are also changing the paradigms. And the, the paradigms meaning really entering this space for zero era. So take into account the multiplicity of actors of interest, having also uh, values. So how we bring value out of what we do and how we take into account of the multi-dimension where we uh, are, now, are now living on. 
and is the symbol of Space 4.0. And I have to say that because of Ian Werner, the subject of diversity is really very high on the ESA corporate agenda. And uh, uh, because kids, when they, when they apply for a job, they don't just ask you what is your business. They want to know where do you stand in society. And this is big paradigm shift. It's not enough to say we bring rocket to space. They want to know how you contribute. And this is what we are working on. Now, space economy, I will just, uh, okay, I just want to tell you a few things. So we are talking about a business. This is 2014, but this figure has already increased by almost 15%. So the space economy is about 300 billion, 300 billion upstream and downstream. Uh, so we have the, uh, okay, the, is about the public budget we have seen is about 50 billion. I also there, if there are questions I can answer. And we have 8.3 billion for Europe. All this is increasing. Extremely highly, highly valued sector. This is the turnover. And in terms of exports, we have hit this 3.3 uh, billion uh, of export uh, from Europe, commercial and export markets, as really be a big achievement. And then it's uh, upstream, again, it's, uh, it's a workforce of 40,000 people. The value is in the downstream. The downstream, you know, the, the biggest part is GPS equipment, but also you have tele telecommunication, you have satellites, uh, television on demand, but Earth observation is coming very, very strongly uh, as, a, as a big element of business, and we saw how uh, Terra Bella was uh, um, bought by, by Google. So the downstream in Europe is about 40 billion. The picture is complex, but this is what I uh, want that you keep in mind, is that according to the study we did with OECD, the European space sector, uh, so in terms of decision making, public decision making, it has a rate uh, of uh, investment which is higher than, tra than transport, education, health, or defense. So it's very good business for our governments. Now, European Space Agency overlooked 22 member states, almost 5 billion budget, 80 satellites in orbit, uh, more than 50 years of experience. Let me go quick. We do all these things more than NASA. NASA doesn't do launches, NASA doesn't do telecommunication. We, are, uh, we have one third of their budget, but we, do, we cover all the aspects. We are among the few agencies that covers all these aspects of space. And this is just a sense of the budget where Earth Observation is our, our big uh, slice of the cake. Now, Again, some elements for you, I, and 85 is a budget goes to contracts to European industry. This is the raison d'etre of the European Space Agency, is to have and support uh, a growing and competitive industry. And now, let's see Finland in space, because there are two minutes. So this has been an amazing year for Finland. We are, is a, uh, sorry, Finland is, uh, is a member state since more than 20 years. And uh, so through ESA participation, 200 activity, 130 companies, contract values of about 300 million. Why has it been an amazing year? Because, let me stay here, otherwise. First, the launch of Alto 2. Now, Finland is part of the group of countries that have operational satellites in orbit. This is a big achievement. And uh, launched from Cape Canaveral in April. Uh, Alto 2 has started to work in May and providing amazing results. It's also uh, an amazing year, 2017. Okay, this is... Uh, this is uh, statement, so I will not uh, the mandate from Finland to ESA, prepare and implement space program, foster development of Finnish industrial structure, improve worldwide competitiveness of Finnish industry, and consider real space as a unique enabler. Now, 
you know these are priorities. There is, uh, there is a space strategy that has been drafted in 2012 and set the priorities for Finland, 2013-2020. There is also the finalization will be soon of uh, Space Act for, uh, for Finland. And all these thematic that are really uh, at the core of the Finnish uh, uh, strategy, ESA is very much interested. Again, 2017, an amazing year, because in May, 18 of May, uh, Finland got the chairmanship of the Arctic Council, which plays a key role in the development of Arctic capabilities. They have two task forces, one for maritime uh, uh, matters, and the other is for connectivity. Uh, ESA is also supporting with a specific task force, and not just through Earth observation, but because ESA believes very much that through the Arctic, uh, you can uh, develop uh, navigation system, telecommunication system, so for us, is. Uh, is really a big opportunity, and as your uh, uh, foreign minister says, what what starts in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. The the subject are really global as climate change. Uh, digitalization, again, in 2017, uh, your uh, Ministry of Economy started uh, a workforce, sorry, artificial intelligence, started a workforce on artificial intelligence to develop a program. And for us, it's key uh, because uh, a new space endeavor will need, and in particular exploration, the use of artificial intelligence. Digitalization of Finland is among the leaders the, in terms of high tech and ICT. You are one of the most digitali digitalized country, and digitalization needs space data and is and needs this kind of competence because we are just launching our digital agenda and the importance of, of space space data and then digital information is at the core of this. And then the 5G also endeavor. And this is about one out of four companies in the innovation field in Finland uh, state that uh, space is a key technology for them. So space solution, the big, uh, I, uh, on 8th of June, our director general came. Uh, and it was decided with the ministry to open a business incubator center in Finland, which is really one of the catalysts for business in the ESA member states. Uh, as technology is part of the technology transfer uh, program work, and this is that has been very successful. Uh, we just had uh, more than 500. Uh, startups that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, started with the big uh, 132 invention, patents, and uh, also the broker network supporting very much the business. So this is, we have uh, 16 bigs, and so uh, the big in Finland is expected to be open by the end of November. And the big Calunia be able to raise 20 million of investment. So a dramatic increase. So big is really the tool to support innovation in member states. And this is also how it goes in terms of equity funding. This, make a picture, these are the people to contact. These are the website to see to do business with ESA. Now, allow me 30 seconds. Only on the women part, because the women part is uh, also <laughs> at the core. Uh, so, as I said, very high on the agenda. And these are the things. Equality, uh, uh, diversity, inclusiveness, uh, attract and develop a diverse pool. Why? Why this is very important? Between 2019 and 2030, 1,600 people are going to retire from ESA, more than two-thirds of the staff. So this is the occasion to build a diverse agency. Diverse, including many aspects and also gender. Today, we have very few applications from girls. In 2016, we had a minimum of 17% out of 5,000 applications coming from girls. And when you take out the Italian share, because the Italians are the number one in terms of applications, we go to 11%. So 
We, we, are, we are not so attractive, but it's not a problem only of space. If you see the other research organization in Europe, and I'm part of this group, it's called Euroforum, CERN, ESO, the Southern Observatory, no one goes above 20%. So there is a real issue in attracting this girl. And it's not about how many get out of STEM, because much more get out of STEM. I, will, I can make a full presentation on this issue, uh, but I don't want to use the time. I just want to say that we are very engaged, and uh, we consider that our ability to embrace diversity will also be part of the beauty of our agency. And I will end with a with with little um, video. It's uh, less than 30 seconds. It's just because uh, I found very, very strong video and explaining that for me, diversity uh, is about courage. Uh, to embrace diversity is about courage and is about fairness. And fairness is one of the things that is wired in our brain. Uh, even animals, they cannot stand unfairness. They cannot stand to be uh, treated differently from others. And it's part of us and, and gives rise to strong reaction. E even you put at risk your survival. So let's show this video. I don't know if we can go. Grape and you will see what happens. We're getting grape and so you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us, that's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. She tests a rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. She tests a rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. Okay. And she gets cucumber again. Don't listen. And that's what she does. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets I really hope we can see it. <laughs> Guys, you're under a lot of pressure. We've got a thousand women in tech looking at you. Say, toy voton. I know you can do it, guys. I know you can. I know you can. But how about if I ask you a question while yes. we wait? Uh, one great question came yeah. in, and thank you for a fantastic presentation. Uh, you know, you're talking about women in space. You know, you know uh, how would, this, how would the, the space sector evolve differently if women were the drivers of the sector? One question for you. <laughs> this is, uh, I like this question because uh, Space is innovation, we agree with that. So space means to go where and to think what has not been taught before. And to get this uh, tension, to get this uh, view, you need a diverse environment. And you need to take in, and it's not about stereotype that girls, bring, that women bring more, uh, I don't know, empathic. It's not, it's not about that, but really about the kind of dynamic that, that women brings in a workplace. And I, when I have to answer this question, uh, because I don't want to be in the politically correct, it's good to have more women, I just look at the private sector. And you see the study from McKinsey that says, when you have more women in, uh, in a company, mm -hmm. you earn 20% more. So industry is not necessarily politically correct for the sake of, so there is a real interest to go for that. Diversity is a driver of long-term success. I also want to say something. The word desire comes from Latin, de desidera esse, desiderum esse, be far from the stars. We all want to join the stars. We all feel this 
tension towards something bigger than us, and this is why it cannot be the, the show of one kind of uh, mindset. So this is uh, what I want to. So no, no monkey. How, how are we doing? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Hey, let's listen. Yes. Let's listen. And see. So. And you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us. That's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. They love grapes, huh? And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now. Gets again cucumber. And she gets crazy, okay? So, that's okay. This is the, this is the science you can cut. She, she gets really crazy and scary. So, we can stop the video. She tests the rock now against the wall. She yeah, we can it stop it. Okay, so and just to say... It looks like my children. Yeah, no, I, and so, what I want to say, yeah, let's get mad when it's about unfairness and let's really go for uh, our place in tech and science and, and the rest and future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you.